Welcome, everybody, to Generation Viewpoint. So thanks for joining us here this week, and uh, I am Freedom, and sitting next to me is Evan. Hello. Now, Evan, give me some help here. You are sitting to my left, right? Yes. So should I say Evan is sitting to my left? Because if people are watching it online right now, you're to my right. So that whole stage right, stage left thing confuses the tar out of me. Like, so what should I do? What's the? You're the one who's always correcting me on what I, don't, <laughs> what I, I should don't know. do. So I'm just asking. I don't know. Because if I say to my left, somebody on YouTube's going, he's not on his left. He's on his right. Yeah, you should probably say to my right. To my right. But, even though I'm pointing with my left hand. But they don't know that. So I have my wedding ring then on my... I, well, I guess they do. I don't know. Whenever I watch like YouTube videos, they <laughs> yeah. don't say to my right or to my left. They just say, I have so-and-so here. Yes. And they point to them. But what's, let's say that they were going to point to something, though, and say, hey, that over there is to my left or to my right. Like, how would they do it? Are you supposed to... I guess they would say to my... Because you're saying my, not there. Yes. To your right. So I would say to... For everybody watching, to your right is Evan. Is that how I would say it? Yeah, but just say to my left is Evan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're pros at this, baby. I and love to, it. And to my right is my father, Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> to your left, so that you don't get mad at me for uh, saying this is right. So awesome. I love it, man. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to be here with everybody. So I just love it when we hit that button and start recording and just talking about whatever. You know, it's such a good yeah. time. So I feel I love how the first like Two to five minutes are usually stuff we don't plan. They just kind of <laughs> it just happens. happens. Yeah, because we before we hit record, <laughs> we're like, all right, we're probably going to talk about these several things here. Yeah, and then also we hit record and something happens. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but like so we awesome. get the idea from saying hello. Yeah, like every time. Yes, yes. So I gotta say, for anybody who's listening or watching right now, and if you're in our local area. Even if you're not in our local area and you want to be a guest on here and just experience what this is like, it is a <laughs> blast. And you get nervous and then you get excited and then yep. you're like, here we, here we go, go. Yeah. And you're like, oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. And what I think is funny is whenever yeah. we do have a guest, yeah. they walk in here and they're just like looking around, like trying to get their bearing of what's going on. They sit down yeah. and they're just... Yeah. Uh, well, there's an error, but we yeah. had the same thing. Yeah, I know. You think about episode number one that we, re we recorded. Yeah. And how nervous we were yeah. to hit the button and start recording. Yeah. But I just think it's funny because once they sit down, yeah. by the time it's over, we're like, all right, we got to wrap up. They're like, wait, we're done. It's over already. Like, we I just was, started. I, I just got comfortable. Like, this is fun now. <laughs> I love so. it. Man. It's so true. Man. Yeah. So it's cool. But we would love to have any of you as, on, as a guest, either on phone, we can call you in, or else you, you can come sit here in the studio and record with us, which is also a good time. So Evan yeah. will make you drink out of a mason jar. But hey, you know what? You only live once. So. Hey, that's right. But So Ev, I got a question. Here you go. <laughs> all right. One thing that's been said a million times, Ev, I got a question. I've been saying that all your life, but yeah, I yeah. love it. So, but I do have a question. If you were going to spend a day in an art museum, history museum, or science museum, which museum would you choose to spend a day in? You, you know, you're asking me, right? I, I am. But you've been interested in a lot of things in your life. So I, I can probably true. take history and throw it out. There's no way it was yeah. ever a history, no. ever in your yeah, life. You can even think back to the, I think it was Thanksgiving when we went to Nashville. Yes. We went to that um, museum uh -huh. on all these Nashville stars, and I just followed you guys. Yeah. yeah like, that's I don't, true. I don't, yeah. especially those, like, I don't enjoy the kind of museums where it's like so and so wore this. I'm like, I don't care if so? they wore that. It's, it's just fabric. <laughs> so, I'm the same like, way. You're like, so? It's like, yeah. Like, so-and-so stood on this exact spot. Oh, I'm staying here, too. Cool. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah, look yeah. at that. It's supporting my weight. Yeah. Look at that. All right, so if History Museum is out of it, that leaves yeah. art or science. Yeah. You have had times in your life that you have been thrilled about both. Mm -hmm. So which one of those two would it be, sir? Which one do you think it's going to be? I am going to go for art. We got a winner. All right. So <laughs> I, I picked art because of your uh, photography yep. uh, lean over the last year. So yep. I would think. So you would love to go to an art museum. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Really? I, I wish there was one around here. Well, there is. It's two hours away. That's around here. No, it's not. No, I mean, like, I can, like, get in my car, 
oh. drive five minutes. And well, there's be one in that's a, Scranton too. It's just a that, small one. Yeah, it's not that one's like bo- like dinosaur bones and stuff. Like, well, yeah. So I don't. I don't want that. So. That's more of a science museum. But there is a little art thing there. But anyways, yeah, we should is. go to one. That would be fun. I think. Yeah. It, I, I would love like the um, the art museum in New York City and stuff like that. I love museums. Yeah. Um, the oh, the problem I always had was finding somebody who wanted to spend a day there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with me. Well, I you know? I feel like whoever I was going to go with mm-hmm. would hate to go with me because when I look at like art pieces. I stand there for probably 15 minutes just looking at one spot, trying to think of what the person that made took the picture or painted or drew or whatever was yeah. thinking when they put that spot there. Seeing it from the artist's perspe- yeah. perspective. So I try yeah. I try and take in the entire picture yeah. and put myself in their spot That's awesome. and try and be get that creative Yeah. Yeah. feel I, I guess. like that yeah some people just look at it and they're like i see a picture yeah they walk past it so i feel like people wouldn't like that because i literally i just stand there yeah and i don't talk i just look at it yeah well i think you have to go with somebody that's okay with being separated as one as everybody's yeah. going at their own piece because or at their own pace i mean because certain styles you're gonna catch it's gonna catch your eye and then other styles are gonna catch the other person's mm-hmm. eye you know so yeah. uh but that's awesome. I think I, I had years ago when I was younger, I always envisioned myself as having an art collection. I always yeah. thought that'd be a great idea. Yeah. I've never done it, but I always thought that'd be kind of cool to have mm-hmm. that kind of a collection, you know? Yeah. So. But. So talking about a collection. Yeah. So um, I came across this term a while ago mm-hmm. that I didn't quite understand, but then once the person explained it, I thought it was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> okay. And it's the term of a man drawer. The man drawer. Absolutely. You know what the man drawer is. <laughs> Please, I'm a man. Every man's <laughs> got a man drawer. Okay, what I didn't know yeah. was that some women have a man drawer. Well, wouldn't that be called a woman drawer then? I guess, but the term <laughs> of the drawer is a man drawer. Yeah. And for the people that don't know what a man drawer is, it's a drawer of just random crap you do not need, but you still have. <laughs> no, no, no. You need to have all yeah. those random items. Yeah, you need to have That's it. why you keep them. You could scour and clean the house from top <laughs> to bottom, give away all the stuff to Goodwill, have a yard sale. Yeah. The man drawer stays untouched, sir. <laughs> all right? Or man box. Some people have a box because yeah. they don't have a drawer to spare. I actually threw away my man drawer the other day. What? The entire thing. Oh, man. I would have took your man drawer. It mostly consisted... <laughs> Of, it was, I think it was close to 50 bouncy balls, different bouncy balls. I can't believe you got rid of your bouncy balls. I know. I, I, st- I still kept a few. My favorite blue wall ball, yeah. I have that. I still bounce that around. I have an, uh, two squishy basketballs. Yeah. But they're fun to like just squish. Yeah. yeah. And I kept those, but oh, everything man. else. I've got man boxes. I've got man bins. I've got <laughs> I got all kinds of crazy stuff, and I've gotten rid of some stuff over the years from when I was a younger kid. But I still have a bunch of the things. Yeah. But I've got random little things in there that you just can't ever let go. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I totally. I, I still have stuff that mm-hmm. I don't need, but I'm like, yeah. but like, just I I just want it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I would tell you. So a great example. I would tell you that probably uh, seven out of ten men have a box or a drawer someplace, and in that is at least one Chuck E. Cheese game token. Oh, yeah. That gets put in the man, <laughs> the man drawer. But for me, I have one Chuck E. Cheese token yeah. in a piggy bank. Nothing else is in the piggy bank <laughs> except for that one token. token. But I know where the token is because I know where the piggy bank is. I had for years, I had a little toll coin for the bridge going into New York. It was a gold with a little silver plug in the middle of it. Yeah. I don't know what. They stopped using them. And I, for some reason, I could never get rid of it. <laughs> I had it forever. So it's a man, man drawer item right there. Yeah. So, no, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. So you, yeah. are you a collector of things? Yes, unfortunately. What are the, what are the type of things that you like to collect, though? Everything that fits in my room. Well, so, you know that. So I do, but but not. So your mother would say that I years ago was a collector of everything. I had Hess trucks, albums, stamps, yeah. Well, coins, I, I guess cards. I, I mean yeah. everything. I don't collect like that. Mm. Actually, I do. Yeah. I just remembered. Yeah. I have it displayed on my shelf proudly. Yeah. It's over. I think it's like. 2,000 hours 
of like watch time yeah. of movies. Oh, so you're a movie collector. I'm a. It's my kryptonite. I like. I love it. I'm like a. Uh, so, like a lady that's addicted to buying shoes. <laughs> but you're for movies? I go into the store <laughs> and I walk past a $5 bin Gotta and I do it. can't help but go through it. And if I find something, I have to buy it. Like oh, I can't hold man. myself back. I love it. Do you feel awkward when you're buying that uh, $5 uh, DVD? No, because I'm focused on the DVD. Uh, focused on the DVD. I was actually awkward the other day. I mean, I wasn't awkward. I was uncomfortable. Okay. Um, because right. I bought Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Did you really? You I, own that movie now? I own that movie. No way. <laughs> yeah. Oh it was, my goodness. It was only four ninety five or something you've like that. You've seen that movie? Oh my gosh, like forty times. I never knew that you've watched that movie. I, I love that movie. I love that movie. Bring <laughs> me a piece of shrubbery. <laughs> yeah. An arbor vitae. <laughs> oh man, that's yeah. too funny. But I felt awkward because there was a husband and wife yeah. looking at movies, and yeah. then there was an older uh, lady there. Yeah. And Monty Python is one of those movies that you're embarrassed to buy, like Napoleon Dynamite. Like you don't go to the store to buy Napoleon uh, Dynamite yeah. proudly. So like. I, I saw it and I saw the price and I was like, ooh, and I crept around the side and they walked away <laughs> and I jumped around and grabbed it and put it under my arm so that no one could see that I had Monty it Python. It was Monty Python. There's nothing <laughs> to hide with that, man. That's a great movie. But it's I a just, classic. But, but people are like, you bought that movie? Guess what? Who cares? Who cares what people <laughs> think? That's an ongoing theme, right? Yeah. Who cares what people think, you know? Yeah. My goodness. I know one of the other things that you like to collect. Collect. What is that? Donald Miller books. That is true. Do you like That's to collect true. those books? Yes. And speaking of, yeah, I read a thing yeah. from his book, Scary Close, yeah. that I want to share. Oh, cool. All right. So, the uh, st- I'm not going to ruin the whole thing, but the story from it, um, he's talking about uh, him and his fiance are on a date, I believe. Okay. And... Um, his fiance says, I love you. Okay. And instead of saying thank you or I love you back, right? He chuckles at it. Yeah. And he's like, Yeah, okay. Yeah. And she gets very upset with it mm. because she just said, I love you. And he's just like, Yeah, okay. Not taking it seriously. Yeah. yeah. And she was like, It's not funny. And he's like, Yeah, of course it's funny. And she says, No, it's not funny because you're saying that I'm not good a, a good enough person to love you for your imperfections. Oh, wow. And then... Oh, wait. So he was chuckling because he was under the impression that nobody could love him kind of thing. But he was trying to be funny yeah. by saying it. Yeah. Um, so he says this. Okay. Um, I was going to make Betsy happy, which is um, his fiance, mm-hmm. and uh, I'd have to trust that my flaws were the ways through which I would receive grace. Okay. We don't think of our flaws as the glue that binds us to the people we love, but they are. Grace only sticks to our imperfections. Those who can't accept their imperfections can't accept grace either. Wow. That's deep, man. Yeah, and I thought that was interesting. I, yeah. This is my sixth time reading through the book and yeah. first time realizing what it says. Yeah, and I, when I think of relationships, I don't think of them as um, them loving my issues. Okay. I guess. Right. I always picture them loving me for being... The good things that you The do. good things. Wow. But yeah. if people married for the good things, then I would have like a bunch of ladies and stuff because... Yeah. And people would be married to a bunch of people because everyone... They, he talks about putting on a show yeah. for people. but And then at the end of the night, they have to go into the green room and become who they actually are Wow! instead of what they're yeah. showing. There was a movie years ago, and I don't know if you've seen it. You know, you're a movie buff, so uh, called Good Goodwill Hunting. Did you ever see that movie with Robin Williams and Matt Damon? I haven't. I, was. Um, I, want, I want to see it, though. So in that movie, um, Matt Damon is like a young guy who's a troublemaker, and Robin Williams' character is a psychiatrist that's, or I think it was a psychiatrist or teacher, I can't remember anyways, who's walking along, a teacher who's walking alongside of him. And at one point, uh, Robin Williams' character, his wife had passed away in the movie, and he says something about how his wife's imperfections were the things that he grew to love about her yeah. and missed most. Mm-hmm. And that kind of speaks right to that. I think that's powerful. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but you usually don't think of that you because don't. You don't. 
it's what annoys you usually. Yeah. Like people being rude or whatever, but yeah. like that's the thing that people give love through by showing that they don't care that you're they're willing to accept way. that. Yeah. To have the the other stuff, yeah. Yeah. Which is encouraging for us to be honest in our relationships too because if you're fake a relationship and pretend to be somebody different and then all of a sudden you do go to a deeper relationship or married or anything like that and all of a sudden you relax and become the person that you really are and you've been hiding then they're like what oh, who are you yeah you know and uh so that actually brings up something that i read the other day um it was an article in the newspaper and it was talking about uh the question of does technology make us more alone and they were talking through texting and email right that we have this kind of distance between us between mm-hmm. people even somebody that you're very close with Right, mm. and does it make us more isolated in our relationship, uh, not as deep? So then, when a relationship does get into to marriage, that things haven't gotten that deep, and so when there's trouble, now people walk away a lot easier than working through it because they haven't spent that time. I don't know. What do you what do you think about that? I I can see where that's coming from, mm-hmm. um, because a lot of people don't want to have serious talks yeah. in person because it's awkward. Yeah. Um, so they decide to have the serious talk over text because it's easier to talk through your fingers than through your mouth. Right. Um, so once they hit an issue, they don't know how to talk through it. Yeah. So they just end up resenting each other for it. Yeah. Yeah. So I can see where that's going. Interesting. That's awesome, man. Thanks for sharing that, Ev. No that was really cool. Isn't it funny when you read a book or yeah. and you read it over and, and then all of a sudden you're reading it and you're like, I never saw that before. That wasn't yeah. here. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So that was pretty cool. But all right. Well, we're at the end of our time here. You know, let me close with a Andy Rooney sayism. I'm going to call it a sayism, right? Nice face. So Andy Rooney <laughs> said this, I have learned that one should keep his words both soft and tender because tomorrow he may have to eat them. <laughs> makes a lot of sense right yeah sometimes we get so impassioned on what we believe to be true and we're willing to fight over it and be angry over it and get riled up and yell in somebody's face and then in a very short term we find out that ooh, maybe we were wrong yeah and you got to eat your words so you yeah. might as well make them soft and tender so they go down easier yeah but a, 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 a famous philosopher said that um the more we get wrong, the closer we are to the truth. <laughs> so there you go. It, you know what? I can't argue because it's absolutely true. So that's why you can, uh, there's an old book called Fail Your Way to Success. Because the more things that you try and go wrong, now you know what doesn't work. That's right. So, but uh, awesome. Well, that's going to wrap up another episode, Ev. Yeah. So it was a real good one, too. I really like that a lot. But man drawer all the way. And women, you can have a drawer, too. Yeah. But you got <laughs> it's a woman drawer, though. So, yeah. But anyways, well, that's another great episode. Thank you, everybody, for joining us once again. And uh, we can't wait to sit down and hit hit record again. And hopefully you'll be sitting here on the phone with us and uh, you can join in the fun. So have a great week in the meanwhile. See you later. See ya. Remember, we're on iTunes and Stitcher. And as always, thanks for being awesome.